as good as a first, you know, a person's first match will go. I'm sure you've asked, you can ask many wrestlers about their first match, and a lot of them will say it was bad. So uh, I guess it was okay for my first time. <laughs> All right. You were listening to the Three Count Thursday. We have uh, Chrissy Rivera with us tonight. She is the queen of the combat zone. Chrissy, you have wrestled in a numer or a, a numerous promotions uh, over your tenure career so far, uh, CZW, Shine, ACW, uh, and more. What does it mean to you as a wrestler to have had such success with such legendary companies? Um, it's, it, it means a lot to me. It really does. At the end of the day, I know that if I were to give it all up and just call it quits on the wrestling business, I've done everything that I wanted to do. I'm very happy over the places that I have gone, would I like to work other places? Sure, uh, because I'm not done with wrestling yet. But uh, it is an honor to work for places like Combat Zone. I, I consider CZW my home. Uh, you know, just being able to do what I love. Wrestling is what I love. I have a, a genuine passion and, and love for it. So being able to uh, share that with other people that have the same passion and love that I do and get to work for all these great places and do you know ridiculous things and make a fool of myself it really is it really is a dream whether i were to work for WWE or not i'm still living my dream so i i'm very honored that i get to do that all right now you've had great success as a singles wrestler uh winning uh a few titles including the acw women's title as well as having some of the uh some of the more entertaining matches in czw which is a feat in and of itself does anything stand out to you as your greatest achievement so far in your career? Um, well, yes, getting to wrestle for CZW is always an achievement. Um, I love wrestling in front of CZW because I tell everybody um, that if you're able to perform in front of the CZW fans, you can perform in front of anybody because they are the most ruthless people on earth <laughs> to get over with. So if you're able to do that and gain their respect in some aspect, then you are, you know, doing your job. So just uh, wrestling for them. Also, um, I worked for uh, DCW in Delaware. I've worked for them since the beginning, since I started in 2005, 2006. Um, they've always, you know, given me the ball to run with and, and I've, you know, won their championship twice. Um, I was also, I wrestled three times in their Divas of Dynamite tournament, which I won twice. Um, so those are things that I hold very dear to my heart because they tr entrusted me to perform good matches and entrusted me to, you know, uh, promote their company and be, you know, just the, the, the model for their promotion. So that is, uh, I always you know, pick that on, you know, highest regard is the, those things. Now, uh, so far you've wrestled in, in all sorts of matches, singles matches, tag matches, uh, intergender matches, hardcore matches. Um, is there any match that you, that you prefer? And is there any match that you have yet to uh, enter yourself in and, and, and something that you want to do in the future? Um, I mean, I do like working tag matches. I love working intergender you know, intergender matches, they're always fun. People have their opinions on those type of things. So it's either, you know, you, you love it or you hate it. But I always have a great time, you know, wrestling the guys, wrestling guys that are bigger than me. Um, that's, you know, that's always that very entertaining to me. Uh, I've done hardcore matches. I've done death matches to a certain degree. I mean, there's not mu much other things I guess I can do. Uh, I would do any of those matches again. I have no problem with it, and I enjoy wrestling all types of matches. So I would be open to any any type. I got to kind of follow up there with um, we use the hardcores and, and the death matches. Have you ever really, really been hurt? Were you, were you received a, a, a uh, significant injury? Yes, um, I wrestled in Delaware. And I separated my shoulder. I popped my shoulder out of the socket, and I actually popped it back in while I was wrestling. So mm. I sprained the AC joint in my shoulder. That was pretty bad. Um, I did a Hurricanrana at Cage of Death one year. On I swung off a rope, <laughs> as ridiculous as that sounds. And I did a Hurricanrana to Devin Moore. And when I came down, I came down on my knee. 
And ever since then, my knee has never been the same. Like I never technically went and got it checked out, but uh, I have a lot of problems with it. I have a lot of pop, a lot of pain with it. It randomly pops or won't pop for weeks at a time. So I know there's something not right going on there, but uh, I I broke my nose early in my career. That was another one. But as far as that, I've been extremely lucky, knock on wood. I haven't had any, like, major injuries, like broken bones, having being set be sent to the emergency room, anything like that. So those are probably like the extent besides, you know, some nasty bruising and, sure. and cuts and things like that. Nothing too awful. <laughs> sure. Now we're big fans, huge fans of women's wrestling and it's been fantastic on the indie scene and, and smaller promotions, ring of honor, TNA, uh, NXT even. Um, but it, it never really, it's kind of struggling to, to catch kind of the same uh, fire uh, all the way up in the main roster at WWE. Um, do, do you see anything that they're like they're they're doing wrong or they're they're struggling to connect with a larger audience with with the women's division up there? Um, I don't think they're necessarily doing anything wrong. I just feel like they have a certain vision for what they want their women to be and how they want their women to be perceived and that's it i i don't know if it's necessarily like because it's you know the vince mcmahon thing you know how he sees how this is how women's wrestling wrestling should be now with triple h like you know taking over and having more control and stuff like that we're now seeing more things like the sasha banks and the baileys and and stuff like that which is great um i just feel like they, I mean, with the Divas Revolution, it's it's great. It's fantastic. I feel like they are advancing in their own way, and they're not going to cater to, like, no offense, they're not going to cater for to, like, all the indie fans or, or things like that. Like, they want to give them something, but they're not going to listen to them 100% because at the end of the day, it's like, it's WWE. Like, they have a vision. They have a goal of what they're going to do, and they're going to do it. And it's either going to work or it's not. That's why we see things where it's like, you know, the NXT where everybody's, you know, going crazy for it and the women's matches and that's fantastic. And then we see other things that they do and we're like, eh, that's not so great. So I don't think they're necessarily doing anything wrong. I just think that's, that's their, that's how they do things. So, so be it. You know, it's either you like it or you don't, you know? Right. Right. Sure. Is there, is there an issue? And I don't want to say issue. Maybe that's not the right word, but with the term diva, do you think that has a hindrance on, on the main roster compared to the NXT women's division um, and, and women wrestlers on the indie scenes? Uh, maybe there is an issue with it because, like I said, now with like so much social media and things like that, it's like fans are so smart to everything that's going on behind the scenes. And, I mean, that's not necessarily an awful thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing because it's, you know, they know all the personal lives. They know what's going on backstage. They know, you know, things that are put into the matches. And, like, basically, kayfabe is, like, basically dead in that aspect. So I feel like, you know, when you see, when you hear divas, it's like, oh, well, you know, you know, WWE is known for hiring models and picking, you know, John Laronite is picking girls out of a modeling book and saying, I want that girl, you know, to be on the roster. And, you know, they kind of get a bad rep for that. But I think that they're trying to change that in regards to that's why they're saying, oh, it's the Divas Revolution. And now, like I said, you know, they have the Baileys and the Sashas and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, it's, it's OK to be a diva because, look, divas aren't just models. Divas are actual wrestlers and they can go just as, as good as the guys. So, I mean, I don't really have, you know, personally, I don't have an issue with the t- term diva because I think it can be a universal Thing. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be, oh, it's, you know, diva model and things like that. I think, you know, the divas, I, I think they're all great in their own way. You know, I don't think any of the, the girls in WWE suck. I think they all have talent. Sure. So that's, you know, that's just opinion. Okay, no, just uh, just the word diva. We've always we've always talked about it and, and the differences that we've seen in NXT up on main rosters and on, on independent scenes. Um what advice would you give to somebody who wants to be a pro wrestler? <laughs> uh, guy or 
or girl or either. <laughs> um, let's start with girl. Uh, a girl comes up to you and says, you know, I, I want to get into the wrestling industry. What do you tell her? <laughs> um, I always tell girls, don't trust anybody, especially the guys. Um, you're going to have to be extra respectful. Um, no matter what, unfortunately for girls getting into the wrestling business, they're looked at in not the best light. They're looked at as like, well, why is this girl here? Who does this girl have a crush on? You know, who is this girl trying to sleep with? Things like that. I see it all the time. It happened to me. Um, it's happened to numerous friends of mine. I see it all the time. So I tell them like, you always have to, you know, present yourself with respect you can't act, you know, like buddy buddy with these people when you first start in because, you know, girls get a bad rep. Like I see it all the time. Girls come into, you know, CZW and they come into training and they're gone because they come in, they're flirting with the guys, they're not taking it serious, and they're gone because they can't hang. So it's like I always tell the girls, like, make sure you know your stuff, make sure you study your stuff. There's so many girls that come into the wrestling business and they only know Trish and Lita and and that you know uh, era of WWE and that's great because that was a great era but you know you need to know your Sherry Martel and your Luna Vachon and your Bill Nakano and all that stuff and it's like jo- just don't be a girl to be a girl in wrestling be a girl that knows her stuff that actually has knowledge can actually talk to the guys and talk to the vets about matches that you've actually studied and watched and and you'll get more respect that way so that's what i always tell the girls so so ultimately do you feel like you have to work a bit harder than some of the guys oh absolutely i don't care what any of them say i know that you know the guys they do have it hard i'm not saying that they have it easy uh they definitely have it hard wrestling training is hard the wrestling business is very difficult it's not for sensitive uh soft people uh but girls i feel have it so much harder especially if you know you have confidence issues and low self-esteem and and things like that it's like it can be a a booster for that but it can also be a killer for that so it's like you have to learn how to control your emotions you you know you have to know how to act in front of the guys as well as other girls because you know you act you know a certain way with no respect in front of another girl like you're going to get heat for that too so I do feel that girls have to watch themselves and work way harder than the guys in that aspect. Okay, now one thing we always like to do, uh, it, it has kind of become a, a staple for us, and, and we, we've loved all the answers that we get for it, uh, is if you could pick out your dream match versus any superstar, past or present, even if you want to, you can do one past superstar, one present superstar, who would your dream match be against? Uh, definitely Bull Nakano. Uh, I love Bull Mikado. I think she is phenomenal. She's always been an idol of mine. I love watching her. Uh, that would be a dream match of mine. And, of course, I would tell everybody Sherry Martel. Uh, I was obsessed with watching Sherry Martel matches. Uh, she was always just so charismatic, and her character, just like everything, was just so natural. Um, and she was just so entertaining. So if I was... If I had the chance to wrestle her, I she's my number one, you know, past. All right. When uh, when our producer Matt had contacted you, we, I guess we promised at least one Disney question. Um, so here's <laughs> the question that we came up with. Um, you are a booker, and there's a fatal four-way match for the women's title. Um, what four princesses or Disney characters are in the match, and why those four, and who comes out on top? Oh, my God. That is a very, very detailed, intricate Disney question. I thought you could ask me, like, what's your favorite ride at Disney? Like, your favorite moment at Disney? Like, what do you love doing? It's like, yeah, we who could t- would I book? We could talk about that. Way? That's okay. Okay, so Fatal 4, if I had to pick, um, I would pick No White. Does it have to be all girls, or it can be like guys and girls? Let's let's do it intergender. That's fine. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so difficult. I would definitely pick Snow White. I would definitely pick 
Um, probably Elsa from Frozen. 